dugout. It's going to be a great moment tonight as we relive a lot of fabulous moments. And right now, they're reliving some of the moments from 1980. Part of the video that we uh, that is available to all the fans who came to the ballpark tonight. A great video. If you remember 1980, my goodness, there's so many thrills, particularly that stretch run in September. Some notes on this 1980 ball club, a 91 and 71 record, one game better than Montreal, team average of 270 and a team ERA of 343. Steve Carlton, big star that year, led in many categories in pitching in the National League, as did Mike Schmidt on the offensive side of things. You see the numbers he put up in home runs, 48, and that was a huge, huge year as he got over the hump after the uh, disappointments in 1977 and 1978, losing to the uh, Dodgers in the National League Championship Series. In fact, Schmitty was a National League leader in home runs, total bases, RBI, slugging percentage, and home run percentage. That, folks, is a real impressive year. He was fourth in walks, second in runs. It's only Keith Hernandez, who was then with the St. Louis Cardinals. Also, consider this, too. Mike Schmidt in the World Series went eight for 21, had two home runs, and seven RBI. Right now, Dan Baker, the public address announcer here at the Vet, will take us through these wonderful ceremonies here at Vet Stadium. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to beautiful Philadelphia Veterans Stadium. Tonight, the National League presents the Philadelphia Phillies and the Atlanta Braves. And ladies and gentlemen, this evening, before the game, we salute the 1980 Phillies. This is the 20th anniversary year of the Phils winning the World Series against the Kansas City Royals. Fanavision now helps us recall the theme for that great year, Ain't No Stopping Us Now. Watch 
for this special tribute was the radio and television voice of the 1980 Phillies. He's celebrating his 30th anniversary with the Phils in that capacity this year. Simply one of the best play-by-play -play announcers in the history of Major League Baseball. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Harry Callis. After 97 years, the team we honor tonight brought this great city and you beautiful fans its first and only baseball world championship. The making of the 1980 world champs began years earlier when this man took over as farm director and then as general manager in 1972. He drafted the nucleus of the 80 team and added the players needed to win it all. The architect of the 80 Phillies, the Pope, Paul Owens. He moved from the farm director's chair to a dugout seat as the manager late in 1979. Oh, he ruffled some feathers with that 1980 ball club. His late season clubhouse meeting in Pittsburgh could be heard in all three rivers and beyond. But boy, did he get the job done. Big D, Dallas Green. with a hard-working coaching staff who was part of the hard-line approach. First base coach, Ruben Amaro, Sr. <laughs> Hitting coach, Billy DeMar. Third base coach, Lee Elia. Bullpen coach, Irish Mike Ryan. Physician, Dr. Philip Marone. Trainer, Don Seeger. The assistant trainer, and now the Phillies trainer, Jeff Cooper. And longtime clubhouse man, Pete Serra. this team had to claw its way to the division title and then survive the excruciating league championship series. Let's return to 1980. Phillies and Expos tied for first place with three games left in Montreal. Jack drove in both runs in a two-to-one victory. Brian third 
Then came one of the wackiest, wildest games in Philly's history. Leo holds Scott, throws out off to Scott, trying to score, and he is out at home plate. Stepped a true gamer, Bob Boo. Race hit to center field, Bake McBride rounding third. He stumbles, but he's still going to score. Boone heading for second base, tie ball game. Bob Boone delivers with a single to center. Down to the last out, Boone a base hit, Bake McBride scores. And this game is tied at four. with a game tied in the 11th. The pitch to Schmidt. Long drive to left field. He buried it. He buried it way back. Out of here. Home run. Mike Schmidt puts the Phillies up 6-4. Oh, what a drive by Schmidt. Unbelievable. He hit that thing. Who better to finish it off than the Tugger? players on the bench who come through and called upon. 1980 was no exception. Please welcome John Vukovic. on the team. Their combined postseason batting average 471. Key hit after key hit against Houston and Kansas City. Greg Gross and Del Unser. plate and in the outfield. Because of other commitments, he's not able to be here tonight, but we want to recognize Zonk Keith Moreland. Well, you saw how the Phillies won the division in Montreal. Next was that gut-wrenching five-game playoff series against the Houston Astros. Down two to one, Pete Rose's daring base running led to a win in game four. The next day, they trailed Nolan Ryan 5-2 going into the eighth inning. In his Hall of Fame career, when Nolan Ryan had the lead going into the eighth inning, he was 112-3. Did that stop this bunch? No way. For the fourth straight game, the Phillies went into extra innings. Gary Maddox got his biggest hit ever. Let's turn to Fanavision for a recap of those last two wins. Standing in the way of their first pennant in 30 years were the Houston Astros. And what followed was considered by most baseball people to be the best NLCS in history. 
Four of the five games went into extra innings. Big plays and clutch hits happened almost every inning. Two games to one with their backs against the wall, Pete Rose took over and added his personal stamp. Here's the play at the plate. He scores! And it is down to one game for the pennant. Game five was a true barn burner. Down five to two in the eighth inning against the great Nolan Ryan, the team that wouldn't die began to work magic. Nobody out. Greg throws a butt face hit. And the Phillies fight to come back. This club just does not die. Bring on the line drive. Bell ball on the field line. Avi left scores. And no one to be running around. He's going to score. Matty Trio. A third and triple. Phillies lead at 7 to 4. Unbelievable. But there was more drama to follow. Somehow the Astros tied the game and sent it into extra innings. But Gary Maddox saved the biggest hit of his career for the top of the ten. And a base hit, I believe, Maddox. Yes, it is. Gary Maddox a hit. Phillies take an eight to seven lead. Maddox at second base. Phillies lead eight seven in the tenth inning. Cradled the final out to ease 30 years of heartbreak. of left-handers and right-handers on the pitching staff. Two lefties on the 80 club were Kevin Sosie and the best hitting pitcher I ever saw, Randy the Blade Lurch. in the bullpen. They combined for 10 wins and 15 saves during the regular season. Who will forget his knockdown pitch of George Brett? Dickie Ray Noel. He of the gunfighter eyes, Warren Brewster. And the big Notre Dame Four right-hand starting pitchers were a combined 38 and 18. In an injury-riddled season, our next guest went 5 and 1. Would you welcome, please, L.C. Larry Christensen. of the month, led the Phils into the playoffs, his hardness, Marty Maestro. Another rookie who won 11 games and started the first game of the 1980 World Series. Welcome, please, Bob Walker. in Houston with two shutout innings and that gut-wrenching fifth and final game of the LCS. Welcome, please, Dick Ruthman. For the third time in club 
club history, the Phillies were in the World Series. They won the first two games right here, lost the next two in Kansas City, before coming from behind in the ninth inning to win game five. Once again, it's time to direct our attention to Fanavision and some World Series recaps. Most fans were just happy they made it to the Fall Classic. But to the men who wore the red pinstripes, there was unshakable resolve to get the job done. took the first two games on home turf. The Royals counterpunched, evening the series at two. Royal hit! This ball may be out of here. It is. One nothing. Listen to this crowd. Two strikes on Brett. Down he goes. That's the best thing right there. Here comes Jim Fry out. The great John Facenda tells what happened next. In the all-important fifth game, Kansas City took a one-run lead into the ninth and sent out their bullpen ace to protect it. The Phillies sent out pinch hitter extraordinaire, Del Unsa. eventually scored the game-winning run, and the Phillies returned home just one win away from their first ever world championship. But by now, it was a bygone conclusion. Yes, after taking a three games to two lead, the Phillies were back home right here for game six, Tuesday night, October 21st, 1980. Here's the starting lineup for that big game. Leading off, a rookie who led the team in hitting at 339, left fielder Lonnie Smith. He's unable to be with us tonight, but we wouldn't all be here tonight without his team leadership. Baseball's all-time hit man, batting second, first baseman, Pete Rowe. ever to play the game, Hall of Famer Michael Jack Schmidt. Right fielder, Bake McBride. He got the 
game-winning hit and two of the wins over the Astros in the LCS. The designated hitter for game six on this night here at the Bet, the Bull, Frank Luzinski. won the pennant in the Astrodome. His 1980 gold glove with his sixth of eight gold gloves he won in his career. The Secretary of Defense, Gary Maddox. <laughs> Adding seventh was the LCS MVP, winning the award after hitting three against the Astros, second baseman Manny Trio. tonight. He's coaching third for the Seattle Mariners in Minnesota. He hit 375 in the series and set a record by starting seven double plays. Shortstop Larry Boa. behind the plate. He got banged up in the playoffs, but didn't miss an inning in the series, during which he led the Phillies with a 4-12 average in the World Series. Catcher Bob Poole. and all of us came to the ballpark knowing that that World Series was over. As Larry Boa said, no way we lose this one with Lefty out there. He won his third Cy Young of four Cy Young Awards in his Hall of Fame career. Went 24-9. 286 strikeouts, 304 innings. Hall of Fame left-hander, Steve. got out of a bases loaded jam in the eighth. Kansas City again loaded the bases in the ninth with one out. Panavision will take it from there, the final minutes, and the greatest Phillies moment ever. history no relief pitcher before or since has ever had a second half like our next guest he had an ERA after July of under one came in from the bullpen so many times to put out the fire 
Here he comes again from the right field bullpen. The Tugger. You beautiful fans who are very much a part of each and every win the guys in that white uniform have. Dallas Green. Thank you, Harry. Thank you, fans. On behalf of Paul Owens and the 1980 World Championship Baseball Team, the Philadelphia Phillies, I want to thank you, fans, for being part of our 20th year reunion. Seems like a long time. But we are very, very proud of what we accomplished. I've been in baseball 45 years. I've been in Chicago and New York. But nobody, nobody will touch the Philadelphia Philly fans. We love you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dallas. Not a one of us up here will ever forget the day after the Phillies won the 1980 World Championship, that unbelievable parade down Broad Street onto JFK Stadium for a rally before millions of fans is something that's etched in our memories forever with a love affair between this ball club and you great fans. So let's reenact that parade down Broad Street right now as this 1980 World Championship team will take a victory lap around Veterans Stadium. Here they are, the world champs. Thank you for being such a great fans. We appreciate it. Thanks for your attendance tonight. Let's hear it for this 1980 World Championship Club. Thank you very much. Good look at Steve Carlton as the fireworks go off here at Vets Stadium. Part of the celebration as you honor the 1980 Phillies. Boy, you look at these names, and boy, do they bring back memories or what? Marty Bystrom with the knockdown. Had a big moment in the uh, during that whole series. He had Mike Schmidt. Great to see Greg Luzinski back. Starting lineup, 1980 series. He had Luzinski in left, Maddox in center, McBride in right. Dickie Knowles, of course, had the big knockdown of uh, George Brett leading player for the Kansas City Royals in that 1980 World Series. There's Schmidt, MVP, 1980. 48 home runs. How about Greg Luzinski? He hit 270, 228 with 19 homers that year. Bob Boone, as Harry told you, led the Phillies in hitting in the World Series. And Tug McGraw, what more can you say about what he has meant to the Phillies in that championship campaign? Are, 1980 Phillies are loaded onto the American Red Cross motor pool truck and they're going to take a victory lap around the vet. And this music is so familiar to me. It's from the 1988 Olympics. And this fanfare pretty much captures the essence of what sports is all about. Championship material. 
great to see Manny Trio. Looks like he could go out and play second base for the Phillies right now. There's Gary Maddox. And now they're playing Queens. We are we are the champions. As the trucks, first truck with the players out in the left center field gap, followed by the the coaching staff. And of course, Pete Rose, not here tonight, but Pete, when he was, his contributions were mentioned, certainly introduced here, he got a standing ovation. And then Dallas Green really got the fans' emotions going when he held up Pete Rose's jersey and placed it on top of first base. And guys, this is one of the best celebrations I've ever seen. What about you? Well, Dave, all I could tell you was these are our guys. I mean, I was lucky enough to be around here when all this stuff was going on. And they got a lot of ovations that year. They got a lot of ovations during the playoffs and the World Series. But, you know, it's really a nice tribute tonight. I, I know I've been wiping away a few tears tonight. It's really neat to see them again. Andy, and hey, a lot of these guys are your contemporaries. Yeah, I mean, a lot of them I played with. Some of them uh, were coaches when I was playing. It's just wonderful to see him and you know, Tugger coming in on that fire engine. It's just, I mean, it's a great group of guys. And, you know, as you said to me as we were watching this, you know, it's it's hard to believe that, you know, it would have been hard to believe that they didn't win. Yeah. It's a, a great ball club. And I, I still, uh, I, I can't for the life of me understand why Pete Rose can't be a part of it. Yeah, I mean, obviously it would have been great to have him here tonight. And uh, that's nice what you have there in your pocket. And it was nice what Dallas did to go over and take Petey's uniform number and put it over on first base. It's a great gesture. I mean, there's so much involved in all this Pete Rose stuff. But all I can tell you, Andy, having been here, the Phillies don't go to the World Series or win the World Series in 1980 no. without Pete Rose. I mean, no, they don't. He was he was such a part of it, and he you know he won wherever he went, and that was uh, you know, that was the thing. He came in here and he said, "You guys just do what you got to do, and I'll take you to the dance," and he did. Oh boy, I'll never forget walking in the clubhouse that night in 1980 when Tug was pitching that ninth inning and that trophy was sitting in the middle of our clubhouse and I remember just staring at it thinking you got to be kidding me. I mean a couple <laughs> more outs and that belongs in Philadelphia. That was just such a wonderful night. The only one they've had here. The only one and that that the next day to be on those flatbed trucks like that and go down Broad Street and into the old JFK Stadium. Man, none of us will ever forget that moment. Every Everybody who's involved in this business should hopefully have that happen to them at least once. Uh, it'd be, it's nothing like going to the World Series, you know. I mean, I, I got there a couple of times with the Phillies in 83 and 93. Unfortunately, we didn't win, but there is nothing like it. I, I, I can't imagine what it would be like to be in a parade and what these guys did in 1980. And, you know, the other thing, Dallas talking about the fans here. I mean, there's, there's been a lot of talk. Players have come here and said the fans aren't good here. I, I can't disagree more. I mean, these are the greatest fans. I, I really got to believe uh, one of the top three cities to play sports in, whether it's football, basketball, or baseball. This is a fabulous city and the fans here, in my opinion, and, and I don't say it just because people might be listening, but I thought this uh, throughout my career when I played here, there are some tremendous fans in this city. Well, they're <laughs> they were going to take a victory lap, but they're taking a few of them right now, and they sure deserve it. I mean, so many of the guys were here tonight that Heck, they had 76, they won 101 games. 77, they won 101 games. They won 90-some in 78, lost in the playoffs all three years. Got the pitching staff decimated in 79, and then, boy, there they are. They won it all in 1980, and, boy, they're their buddies. I mean, I, I grew they up had, with those guys. They had fun doing it, too, believe yeah. me. We had a lot of fun off the field, too. I mean, that, that team right there, they enjoyed themselves to the utmost. I mean, they were tough baseball players and, and they had a good time playing the game they had a good time talking the game afterwards they were just a lot of fun it's it's just really neat to see them all again and they look great oh they do I mean it was a close-knit group I mean there was a lot of camaraderie a lot of chemistry on that club and I, and I think that's that's part of the reason they wanted those guys they professionals they knew how to play more more importantly they knew how to win there's Lefty and Larry Christensen. They're still great friends. That's another thing about this group, uh, Andy. A lot of them have remained good friends. Some of them have stayed in the area. 
and we get to see others of the guys when you travel around the country and you know there's Doug Glanville of course who just idolized Gary Maddox and he still bows to Gary when he sees him calls him the Secretary of Defense. Uh, it's got to be something you know you look down in the dugouts and you see the guys on the steps just watching these guys and, and you can't help you see Petey Sierra worked in that clubhouse for so many years just uh, what a wonderful wonderful man those those guys John Vukovic they're helping him down I mean uh, it's got to be a thrill for Petey to see everybody here too. Petey's been in the, was in the Phillies organization for over 50 years in all kinds of different capacities. Now they're going to line up on the uh, I believe on the both the first and third base side. They said they were going to do anyway. They're going to line up down there and and uh, we're going to carry the national anthem. There's a good buddy right there, Don Seeger, getting off the truck. He was a trainer here for so many years. Dr. Phil Marone. You know, and you look at that bunch right now, Andy, and the game's changed. Some people say, why can't you put a team like that together? How can you pay them all? <laughs> There's look at Irish. There he is, number five, Mike yeah. Ryan. Oh, Dick, he's Dickie a Knowles, beauty. who's still here. Bob Walk. So yeah. Bobby downstairs, he said he got a hall pass tonight from the Pirates. He's a Pirates <laughs> broadcaster. There's Arnold Ray McBride, Shake and Bake. There's Bobby. Marty Bison. Marty. 5-0 and oh in the month of September and did such a great job in the playoffs and World Series. Lonnie. Lonnie played on a lot of different championship teams. And there he lefty. is. <laughs> I hope I don't see him tonight. At least not after the game. There he is, the piece of work of all time right there. <laughs> Speaking of a piece of work, Dallas just went and got Pete's jersey. Well, the fans around around baseball aren't gonna they're not gonna let Major League Baseball forget about Pete Rose, that's for sure. Speaking of great players, sir. Harry introduced him as the greatest third baseman to ever play this game, and it's hard to argue that Michael Jack Schmidt wasn't that and remains that. Yeah, you can't argue with the numbers and what he did. Right now, Schmidt wants to figure out how to putt a little bit better. <laughs> <laughs> that's, what, that's what he's trying to do. And now here comes the, the 2000 ball club's going to line up on the first base side, the 1980 club on the third base side for the national anthem. And th those guys, though, they have to be looking at this 1980 team and saying, wow, what what tremendous talent and you know it's probably something that they can look over there and look up to and maybe get some inspiration from them. You got Hall of Famers, Gold Glovers, all stars all over the way. There they are right there. Doug Doug has so much respect for Gary Maddox and Gary for Doug and that's nice to see them get together like that. We're going to have the uh, national anthem right now. We're going to carry that so everybody's standing here at Veterans Stadium on this wonderful night for our national anthem. us. We will now observe a moment of silence for Phillies pitcher Nino Espinosa, who passed away in 1987. Invited to join in singing as Phillies Stadium organist Paul Richardson plays our national anthem.
back here at Veterans Stadium, Chris Wheeler with Larry Anderson, our national anthem by Paul Richardson in a moment of silence right before that one guy is no longer with us uh, who was a member of that team, one of the greatest guys you ever want to know, and Nino Espinosa died very young, age 35 of a heart attack, and boy, Nino was a, just a guy that just smiled all the time, and it's sad that Nino's not here tonight. But it is also McFadden and Whitehead were going to sing the anthem. They sang Ain't No Stopping Us Now, but uh, tonight on the way to the ballpark, John Whitehead's son was struck by a car, had to be airlifted, so our thoughts and prayers go out to John Whitehead and his son. Yeah, and Paul Richardson, of course, steps in, does a great job with the national anthem and, and the moment of silence for Nino. There goes the 1980 ball club. They're going to come upstairs now and have some fun. They've been <laughs> having a little... Little They're parties the last couple of nights, from what I understand, they haven't changed. <laughs> yeah, they all made it out to the to the field, though. That was good. Yeah, well, thank goodness it was a night game. <laughs>